Welcome to the Channel Islands, welcome to Jersey, and more specifically, welcome to the Jersey International Air Display 2018. On Thursday the 13th of September, an eclectic variety of aircraft descended on this small, self-governing British dependency just off the north coast of France. Let's take a look at the running order and among the highlights of today's show, the Flamont Duo Nord Nor Atlas Glider FX, Patrie Raver marked the halfway point of our coverage, then there's two jets of the Swedish Air Force historic flight and we finish with the Royal Air Force aerobatic team, the Red Arrows, 20 minutes from now. Well, the Jersey Air Display is one of the biggest annual events on the Channel Islands and this midweek show has become almost a public holiday for the islanders who come here in their thousands. Jersey International Airport is the home of the participating aircraft. There's also a public viewing area allowing visitors to watch them arrive and depart. the Aero Superbatics wing walkers, until recently under Breitling sponsorship. And that's Rich Goodwin starting up his Pitts S2S. Also on the ground with it, a Yakovlev Yak-3U from France. Lower Park on the outskirts of the capital St Helier is the focal point for the action on the ground. That's where you'll find trade stands, ground exhibitions and live commentary. Also operating from the Lower Park end of the beach is the Glider FX display team and it's the first time in the show's history that aircraft have actually operated from the beach itself. Display datum though is actually around a kilometre west of here. Getting the action underway is the Glider FX PA-28 Pawnee. Pilot Guy Westgate is going to perform a banner tow. To do this, he has to catch onto a rope connected to the banner, which is suspended between two poles. The Pawnee is trailing a grappling hook, which then catches onto the rope and pulls it along behind the aeroplane. The banner is advertising British Airways flights to London. In fact, the majority of flights from Jersey are to the British mainland, somewhere in the region of 20 flights a day. That's because the only other way to get there is by ferry, which takes around eight hours. Operating from the beach isn't easy. The tide only went out far enough to get onto the beach about an hour before the banner tow, uh, with a local university air squadron helping to clear seaweed off the makeshift runway. And large puddles remain, which the pilots really have to try and avoid. Now from the Amical Alençonne des Avions Anciennes is their pair of Dassault Flamands.
Both these aircraft come from the same family, but they are subtly different. In the lead is an MD-312, a six-seat transport aircraft, of which 118 were built. They saw service in France, Tunisia, Madagascar and South Vietnam. And behind it is an MD-311, which is a navigation trainer, as you can see from its distinctive glazed nose. Just 41 of those were built, and they were used solely by the French Air Force. The pair's display can be seen across northwest Europe, uh, last seen on the UK mainland in 2013 at the Eastbourne International Air Show. And another pair of prop aircraft now, this time two Boeing Stearmans of the Aero Superbatics Wing Walkers. Founded in 1986, this team have performed under a number of guises, the Crunches, the Utterly Butterlies, Team Gino, and until 2017, the Breitling Wing Walkers. They have displayed in 20 countries around the world, including China, Australia and the UAE, as well as most of the UK's big air shows. The team are the only formation wing walking team in the world and the aircraft have been modified to be able to do that. Uh, they now produce 450 horsepower, which is more than double that of a stock steerman. And there's an extra pair of ailerons on the top wing as well to improve the roll rate. Now this is something really quite special, the world's only flying Nord 2501 Nor Atlas. It's a fairly regular sight on the French airshow circuit, but certainly not overseas. This was one of only two overseas appearances in 2018. The Nor Atlas made its first flight in 1949. Some 425 were built and they were used by 13 air forces, mostly in Europe and Asia. They also saw civilian service in France and Algeria. The last Nor Atlas was retired in 1989.
This particular plane is operated by Le Nord Atlas de Provence, an association dedicated entirely to keeping this aircraft in the air. They're based in Marseille in the south of France. And now back down to the beach as Guy Westgate takes to the air once again. This time he's flying the Glider FX MDM-1 Fox, Rob Barsby flying the Pawnee. And this is the roll on toe, one of Guy's specialities. Guy actually holds the world record for the most consecutive rolls while on aero toe, which he set at the Portugal Air Summit 2018. And the record is an unbelievable 100 rolls, which took almost 12 minutes to complete. and now into the display proper. And this is really where the Fox comes into its zone. This Polish-built glider is said to be the most aerobatic two-seat glider in the world. Just 36 have been built, designed in the early 1990s. Sadly, smoke from just one wingtip in Jersey because of a technical problem. Guy Westgate is the team's main pilot. He's been the British National Glider Aerobatic Champion at the unlimited level eight times. He's also pioneered nighttime air displays with pyrotechnics. In fact, he performed the first ever pyro display in the UK in 2010, and he's been instrumental in setting up a number of such display teams. He now leads both Glider FX and the Aerosparks display team. and a low pass in front of the Elizabeth Castle to end the display. And here's something rather different, the Patri Raver flying the Rutan Acro EZ.
The Acro EZ is derived from a series of kit planes designed in the 1970s by Bert Rutan, an American aerospace engineer, and they're noted for their lightweight and efficient design. This French team has been performing their unique and energetic demonstration all over Europe since 1992. And now onto the Swedish Air Force historic flight, two of their jets breaking left and right into their solo displays. First up is the Saab J35 Draken. If you look at the futuristic design of this aeroplane, it's hard to believe it made its first flight in 1955. Six hundred and fifty-one were built. They were used by five European nations and the United States National Test Pilot School, with the Austrian Air Force being the last to retire the type in 2005. And here is the Viggen. First flew in 1967, 329 were built, and it was operated solely by Sweden, being retired in 2005. This is a two-seat SK-37 trainer variant, which made its first post-restoration flight in May 2018. The Swedish Air Force historic flight really do a superb job flying a huge fleet of these classic jets. Vigans, Lansons, Adraken, Tunnen, Hunter, Vampire and Saab 105 among others. And several of those aircraft have been returned to flight just in the last few years, which surely makes them one of the most prolific collections of Cold War era jets anywhere in the world. Well, just two more acts to go now, but here comes Rich Goodwin in his highly modified Pitts S2S muscle biplane. This isn't a stock Pitts, it's been extensively modified. Some of those 
Modifications include new landing gear and an upgraded engine. And look at that torque roll. Rich using the torque of the engine to keep the aircraft rotating even while it's stationary. Rich's latest mission is to build a Pitts S2S fitted with a pair of Lynx jet engines, which combined with its Lycoming 540 engine will give it a power to weight ratio of greater than one to one. That aeroplane should be ready to fly in the first half of 2019. Being in a curved bay really doesn't make it easy for the pilots to stay close to the crowd, but Rich ends his show with his traditional knife-edge pass nonetheless. And now, perhaps the stars of the show, the Red Arrows. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Please welcome the Red Arrows! The Red Arrows have a long association with the Jersey Air Show. Until recently, the team had never missed a single edition of the show. In fact, it was the only show they'd never missed. But that all changed in 2017 when the Reds were on tour in the Middle East during the Jersey Air Show. And it'll be the same story in 2019 with the Reds due to tour Canada and the USA in August and September. This is the Tornado, one of the most popular manoeuvres in the display, with Reds 8 and 9 rolling around the rest of the formation. The Red Arrows display is in two halves, starting with nine ship formation manoeuvres and followed by more dynamic manoeuvring by smaller formations of aircraft. They start the second part of the show now with the centenary split. Red one will break the formation down into two sections, the front five and the rear four, nicknamed Enid and Jim. Red 10 squadron leader Adam Collins talks the crowds through the display. Yeah. <laughs> 
The Red Arrows fly the Hawk T1A. The Hawk, in all its variants, is the most successful jet trainer ever produced, with more than 1,000 built and over a dozen countries operating the type, plus a number of former operators too. The Red Arrows have used the Hawk since 1980 and will continue to fly it until around 2030, although it's not yet clear what could replace it. The Hawk is also a very popular jet among other aerobatic teams. It's used by the Saudi Hawks, India's Surya Kiran, and the Midnight Hawks of Finland, plus a number of defunct teams such as the mixed type Indonesian team Jupiter Blue. On each sortie, each jet can produce five minutes of white smoke and one minute each of red and blue smoke, so the display has to be designed incredibly carefully to make sure that coloured smoke is used only where it's most effective. That's why you'll see in some manoeuvres the smoke colours of each aircraft is constantly changing rather than staying the same through the manoeuvre, and the rollbacks which you're watching now is a perfect example of that. and the Red Arrows end their display with the Vixen Break. And with that, the Red Arrows conclude our look back at the Jersey International Air Display 2018. It has been a truly memorable air show featuring an eclectic mix of elusive aircraft and firm favourite displays, together representing all facets of aviation. And Jersey itself has been an excellent host, a picturesque seafront venue, a friendly and relaxed atmosphere and perfect weather, combined to cement Jersey's position as one of Britain's truly unique air displays. To see more feature-length airshow reports, please do visit our website, thisisflight.net. Until next time, from me, Adam Landau, it's goodbye for now.